Hello and welcome to another episode of Autogefuel with me, AJ. Infinity has had a very successful 2016. They have almost doubled their sales as well as had an expansion in their dealer network. They hope to capitalize on the success by introducing the 2017 uh, Q60. Today, we are here in Frankfurt to see if this car has what it takes to steer customers away from its well-established rivals like the C-Class Coupe and the Audi A5. So, are you interested? Let's find out more. Come on, let's go. So up front, we have the very recognizable Infinity trademark grille. Really nice crescent shapes and a nice thick chrome or outline on the border. There's a small kink here as well. And towards the middle, we have a very large Infinity logo. And because this houses a lot of the electronics for the adaptive cruise control and such, it's two dimensional. Now this being the three liter sport tech uh, top sports variant, you have a very nice sporty lower bumper and over here we have nice LED headlights and Infinity has designed this to look somehow similar to a human's eye so let us know if you think it does and finally we have really nice haunches on the bonnet as well so here on the side first of all we have a very beautiful 19 inch alloy wheel as we go down the side you see that we have the 3.0 T badge for the engine a very special engine, trust me. I'll come to that in a little bit later. As we go further down the side, hello, we have really nice design lines over here, a nice uh, chrome trim along the windows. And as we go further back, again, following the Infinity uh, design language, we have a crescent here and a nice swooping, sloping roof line for the coupe, the three door. And finally, a nice shoulder haunch over the rear wheel arch. So the Infinity stands at about 4.6 meters long and that's about 15 feet. So here at the back, we have really nice LED lights, the Q60S badging, a small little spoiler of sorts. And further down, we have really nice fins towards the bottom, black plastic at the bottom of the bumper and really nice big uh, exhaust pipes. So the Q60 is about 1.8 meters wide. That's about six feet. So let us know what you feel about this design. Put your comments in the section below. So the Infinity Q60 comes with two engine options. The 2.0T, which is a two liter, four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, which is the same uh, shared with the Daimler. And we see that in the Mercedes GLA as well. Uh, this makes 208 horsepower. It's mated to a seven speed torque converter automatic transmission and goes to rear wheel drive. And then we have this. This is the 3.0T. So it's a three liter twin turbo V6, as you can see. And this is a special engine because this is the VR30 DDTT engine. And for those of you who know, it's a very close derivative of the engine used in the Le Mans Nissan race car, as well as the Nissan GTR. So could this be a younger brother to the Nissan GTR overall? because this also has a four wheel drive system and this engine makes 400 horsepower. So the Q60 comes in four variants, four trim levels, it starts off at the premium, then the premium tech, then the sport, then the sport tech. The premium with the two liter engine starts around 44,500 euros here in Germany. And this with the three liter V6 uh, and the four wheel drive costs upwards of 64,000 euros. So here we have the key. This car gets keyless entry. So let's see how the door sounds. Sounds pretty solid. The window also comes down when you open it and then goes back up when you close it. So let's check out the inside. The door opens really wide, again, because this is the three-door coupe. Unfortunately, we have all animal skin leather, but you know, in this price segment, in this uh, 
the class it's expected. Up here we have chrome, a nice chrome trim, and carbon fiber below this. You can change this and specify different material in different colors if you wish. The handles and the switch gear are really good quality. Unfortunately, you don't have too much storage space in the door. And this is a very nice new system. It's called the Bose Performance Series. So it's a new series, a new speaker range designed by Bose. And this car debuts this. And uh, the, speakers, uh, the speaker system has 14 speakers all throughout the car. And now the seats are, again, because this is a sport tech version, has sport seats. Unfortunately, again, all animal skin leather. It's electronically adjustable. And it's not that comfortable. I will talk about that later on. But now let's hop inside. So now let's take a look at the interior. So we have a really nice meaty steering wheel. In fact, the steering wheel and the gear shift lever are both unique to this model uh, in Infinity. You have a lot of buttons on the steering wheel to adjust your volume for your call and for the menu. So you have a screen on your dashboard, which gives you a lot of useful information about your driving aids, of which there are many, uh, your chassis control, a whole bunch of things. And there's a shortcut button to engage all your sensors or disengage them if you wish. Again, this being the seven speed automatic torque converter, you have paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. And overall, it's very sporty, including uh, the dashboard itself. You have a analog tachometer and a analog speedometer. And there's these really nice little details around the edges, which again, give it a much more unique uh, appearance. So let's take a look at the center console. So underneath the armrest, we have a nice felt lined cubby hole with USB sockets and a 12 volt power socket as well. Really good build quality, doesn't shake, doesn't rattle. Up further, we have two beverage holders, again lined with nice shiny chrome. And then we have the drive mode selecting switch over here. We have snow, eco, standard, sport, sport plus and personal. I'll show you that a little bit later. Then we have the control for the command unit, the shifter, and behind that, a small cubby hole again with another 12 volt power socket. So now let's take a look at the central console. So down here, you have your CD player with hotkey buttons for seeking the track, radio, media, volume and power and seat heating buttons, hazard light buttons, pretty much standard. Up here, this is where things get a bit interesting. So as you can see, there are two touch screens. So this is always your navigation. So when you're changing your music or your climate or your driving settings, you never have to worry about your, uh, losing your navigation. Speaking of the navigation, as you can see, it's not that great. I mean, it says that we're in the water right now and I know for a fact that I'm pretty dry. So you can zoom in and zoom out using the knob in the bottom, but that also shows you that up here, the border of this, the sky color also can be a bit distracting. And I think the system could be a little bit better, but overall it's okay. Now coming to this part of the screen, on the sides you have your climate control buttons. So standard temperature choosing uh, buttons, your uh, fan speed, and things like that. If you wish, you can even control them by pushing the climate button here and then changing the settings on the touch screen. On the left, you have the audio button. So again, the Bose 13 speaker, uh, new performance series, sounds really good. And you have a lot of settings for this as well. Uh, you can change a lot of the bass and treble and things like that. In the main menu, you have options to connect your phone and the in-touch services. So this is a subscription service offered by Infinity, which using your phone, you can track your car, you can find your car in a parking lot and things like that. And then, oops, over here, you have the Infinity drive mode selector. So now this car has a lot of electronic aids. First of all, it has digital suspension, so it's an uh, adaptive suspension. So you can tune it however you want with this. Uh, sport and standard are the two options that you have. 
And then the steering is the direct adaptive steering. So it's the second generation of this technology. So basically, it's a fly-by-wire type steering. There is no mechanical connection between the steering wheel and the front tires. So we will see how that really performs out on the road and in the real world. But again, you have multiple choices to you know, determine the amount of feedback and the weight that you want, and even the response. How quick of a steering rack do you want? All of these can be changed on the system here. Again, engine transmission also has several driving modes, as you can see, sport, eco, standard, and snow. You can even choose these settings, like I showed you earlier, by using the toggle switch, which will give you direct, link, uh, direct access to the major driving modes as well. So, go back. This, this screen requires a little bit more prodding, but anyway, and then you have active lane control, which is basically uh, going to help you keep your lane and it will break the wheels in order to steer the car and make sure that you're always in the correct lane. So if you do turn this on and then you're driving and then you shut the car off and then you get back inside the car, then this system automatically deactivates. So if you want to have it all the time and you have to remember that every time you get into the car, you have to activate the system again. Now let's take a look in the back seat. So, one lever to tumble the seat forward, one button, and the seat automatically slides forward. It's kind of slow. And now, let's see if I can do this. Oh. Well, as expected, it's quite tight. So, I pull the seat back, and I push the button. Am I going to get squished or am I going to survive? We'll find out. Well, I just about made it. Headroom is non-existent. I can kind of slouch down if I wanted to and then my back would start hurting. But leg space is not too bad. Keep in mind, I'm 5 foot 8 or 1.7 meters and this is set to my driving position. So, I mean, a three-door sports coupe isn't really meant for its back seats. Kids would be fine. You also have isofix points with top tethers. Uh, so overall, it's, it's as expected. There's a little button here which releases the hatch. And well, as you can see, it's not that large. There's a very large loading lip. Um, because of the, the shape of the, of the rear, the opening is also quite narrow, but you do have a little tab which you can pull and fold the rear seats down. This gives you some more space to put some longer items. Just to demonstrate, here's a regular sized suitcase. It fits in with plenty more room to spare. Okay, so now let's take it for a spin. So it has a foot operated parking brake. So press on it once and it releases. Shift into reverse. It has a reverse parking camera with dynamic gu guidelines. And it also has a 360 degree camera as well. And plenty of sensors. There's plenty of safety kit on this car. Like I mentioned earlier, you have blind spot detectors, you have lane keeping assist, you have emergency assist. So at speeds up to 50 kilometers per hour, the car can sense um, cars up ahead or even pedestrians up ahead, and it can brake in emergency situations for you. So let's wait for the traffic to die down a little bit. And here we go. So like I mentioned earlier, this car, the 3.0T, has the bi-turbo V6. So it sounds pretty nice on the inside, but on the outside, all you really get is just the turbo vine. But um, let's just talk about, first of all, the comfort of the seats. Um, honestly, I'm not that, that happy with these seats. They're okay. You can adjust the amount of side bolstering you want. You can adjust your lumbar support, 
the reclining of the back and the base, all the user, usual stuff. But it's a bit too firm for my taste. I think uh, for short periods of time, it's okay. But uh, for longer periods of time, not so much. Anyway, so now let's check 50 to 100. Here we go. So, pretty powerful. Again, 400 horsepower, which is quite impressive, to be honest. And it has all-wheel drive, so really good traction. No doubt about that. And the main point about this car, again, is the steering. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was a bit skeptical in the beginning because, you know, I think that to have really good steering feel, you need to have, you know, at least some kind of a physical connection. Yes, everything is electrically, I mean, electric powered steering, but this is completely fly by wire. So there is no physical connection between the wheels and the steering wheel. But with the sports mode that I have it now, as you can see, oh, I had it in standard, there we go. Sports mode, it's really nice. It's really, there's a lot of weight and it's really sharp, as you can see, with just a little bit of movement, there's instant response from the car. So I must say, I'm pleasantly surprised. Apart from that, well, there's good noise insulation. I don't hear too much of tire roar or wind noise. Visibility is at a premium. I mean, again, this is a sports coupe, so you can't really expect to have great visibility. Visibility out the back is also quite restricted because you know, the rear windshield is sloping and the roof line is also dropping quite heavily. But uh, up front, I don't have too much of, of, of visibility because the roof line is quite low. You know, side visibility is all right. But um, overall, it's, it's not too bad. Again, expected when you're in this uh, segment and looking at um, uh, coupe, sport coupes, they're all going to be pretty much the same in terms of visibility. But definitely this is nice. Now that we have it in Sports Plus, the throttle response is uh, heightened. Ooh, really sunny today. The throttle response is heightened. And we also have uh, the engine uh, gearbox holds a lower gear for a higher time. So you have quicker acceleration. And again, I talked about the steering. And finally, the suspension as well becomes stiffer, the damping. It has, uh, it's called the digital dynamic uh, suspension or something like that. All these fancy words, but you know, in the end, they all do the same thing. And on the highway right now, it is a bit jittery. So I'm gonna turn it down to, let's see, let's see how standard it is. Honestly, it didn't feel too much difference in suspension, but immediately the steering wheel is a little bit lighter. And you know, the rack, the ratio over the rack is also decreased. So it's not so sharp acting anymore. So on the highway, it gives much better stability. Apart from that, the steering wheel grip is really nice. The GPS, I think, could be better. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a bit too, you know, looks a bit outdated, to be honest. I think uh, the graphics can be better. As you can see, the refresh rate is quite low. So it's, you know, it seems like your car is jumping every couple a uh, uh, hundred feet so I think it could have been a bit smoother but you know I'm just nitpicking here then let's see the air conditioning vents are also positioned really well keeps me warm has seat heaters so it's very comfortable this car also gets adaptive cruise control speed limiters all the usual kit that you would expect from a car in this segment so it also has lane keeping assist, like I mentioned, and you know, if I stray a bit too off from my lane, the steering wheel buzzes and the inside wheels also brake a little bit, so it pulls me back, it drags me back into line automatically. So here we are on an unrestricted section of the Autobahn. I mean, it's doing 180, absolutely not even breaking a sweat. really good in gear acceleration as well at this time I do hear a bit more of the wind noise coming from the sunroof as well a little bit but you know it's okay honestly it's a really fun car I'm really enjoying myself 
especially with the steering wheel you know I'm quite convinced that this kind of a system works really well also because it's completely digital and electronic it gives much faster responses see like right now we're pushing it it's really grippy we're already crossing 200 oh did you hear that whistle yeah. see there is some kind of an air gap somewhere I don't know why it's whistling it could be perhaps that this car is the pre-production prototype so there are some things that don't work you know perfectly for example the okay now we're back into unrestricted so let's slow down like for example the uh, traffic sign detection system you know the camera which detects the speed limits uh, that system is not up and running in this car again because of uh, it being a pre-production but otherwise you know I think the 3.0T is the model to go for although it's really really expensive because let's face it if you're buying a sports coupe and you're looking at things like the C-Class coupe or the A5 then you know it's not really about the money it's about having fun and about having a very dynamic car and you know in Germany here at least you see so many of these uh, Mercedes Audi and BMWs so Infiniti is up and coming and it's gonna always draw people's attention like even when we were driving through the city in Frankfurt today a lot of people turned around and you know stopped us and asked us at traffic lights or in the parking lot about what kind of a car this was so it certainly attracts a lot of attention if you're into that kind of a thing then you know it's definitely worth considering So now we're off the highway and we're in a small side street heading back into the city. So now let's check out in eco mode. You know, now it's quite a tame beast. It's not so loud, it's not so visceral anymore. It's a little bit softer. And again, because of the uh, adaptive uh, cruise control or rather the emergency braking assist, you know, when you're driving in the traffic it already starts slowing down the car for you before you even start doing it so it's really really useful it's, it takes a lot of the pressure off anyway now let's see how eco really the eco mode is so let's see let me go to the where can I find it I economy well average <laughs> it's 15.3 liters for 100 kilometers which is disastrous but then again we've been driving this car with a heavy foot trying to get the most out of the performance and again 400 horsepower twin turbo v6 it's not going to be economical ever and 15.3 liters is too much but again if you're in the market for this kind of a car I don't think economy is going to be your biggest concern so at city speeds, you know, this car is really quiet, it's comfortable. The armrest on the right side is a bit too farther back, so you cannot really rest your arm there. You have to put it on the steering wheel. And also the gear, uh, sorry, the uh, knob to change the controls on the, for the MMI is really, really far back. So you kind of have to twist yourself a little bit to be able to reach these controls. And I'm a short guy. I mean, I'm five, five foot eight, which isn't, you know, I'm not tall in, by anybody's standards. So if you're taller and your arms are taller, you know, you're going to have to do a T-Rex to reach the controls. But apart from that, this car gives you a unique experience, which is different than, you know, what you usually find on the roads with all its German competitors. Yes, it's more expensive, but then again, that's because this car is completely shipped in as a CBU, you know, a completely built unit from Japan. And uh, like I said earlier, if you have the standard 2.0-liter version, the engine with 2.0-liter four-cylinder turbo, that is built in the U.S. in the shared factory with Daimler. So nothing ever, uh, nothing is, you know, manufactured or put together in Germany. So it's going to be a little bit more expensive than in other countries. But overall, I think it's a, a good package. And uh, I would like to hear what you guys think. So please put your comments in the section below. Also, if you want to compare, uh, we also had the Infinity Q30 and the QX30, so make sure you go back and watch those videos as well. The 
This is the 2.0T. We were driving the 3.0T. Also, this is a different color, but on the whole, on the outside, nothing really is different than the version we were driving. So to summarize today's drive of the Infiniti Q60, well, when I first started, I wasn't so sure that I would like the fly-by-wire steering system, but I must say that I think Infiniti have got it down pretty well. This is their second generation, so they've improved upon uh, the feedback, using the feedback they got from the uh, users, and I'm sure by the next generation it'll be even more better. So let us know what you think about this car and put your comments in the section below.